While Skolak Monty Shane is best known for his role as head of the studio, he is said to be one of the finest mages Charlayan has ever produced. Having seen for myself the ease with which he weaves extraordinarily complex and powerful magics, I have no reason to doubt the claim. Some of my earliest memories are of Skolak Monty Shane, actually. He was a close friend of our grandfather. He would come for tea and amaze us with his tricks. Much like his demonstration with the paper and ink, he's a huge part of why I watched Ed the Studium in the first place. Well, that's given me much to mull over. I feel as though we're one step closer to understanding the forum's true motives and the mysteries of life itself for good measure. It's funny, I came here with the intent of expressing my gratitude, only to leave more indebted than before. I have a feeling his friendship and support will be a great boon to us in the days to come. And on that note, let's head back to the Annex. Perhaps on the way, you could better acquaint yourself with Ki Aliapo, as the scholar suggested, while I share our findings with Raha. glamour out there. Oh, so which one of these folk is Kiliya? Skolak was telling us about Sagenhaft, yes. Brilliant, just the woman I was hoping to see. As I'm sure you are aware, the Studium is the most prestigious educational institution of all of Charlayan. As such, we make a point of only working with the best educators and students. The gleaners we employ are also held to the same high standards, of course, which is perhaps why it has been so difficult to find the assistance we need of late. Surely you understand the trouble of finding competent and capable help. Ahem. That you are come here suggests you're willing to lend a hand, no? I'm certain you would have much to gain from working with us, if so. Do let me know should you commit to lending your services to the studio. I should warn you, however, there is much I must explain ere you begin. So please be certain you have sufficient time to spare. I just wanted to accept the quest. Ha! <laughs> now allow me to explain our work here. Professors and students from our main faculties gather and searchers meet in order to do business with and recruit reputable individuals such as yourself. Allow me to briefly introduce those here at present. Here we have Borik from the Faculty of Archaeology. Or Archaeology, wow. He works as an assistant to one Professor Rurusha and is currently seeking a skilled metal worker to help restore an ancient relic. Then there's Jude, who belongs to the Faculty of Astronomy. He seems to be looking for an artisan able to work with leather, cloth, or wood, but he wouldn't tell me much more than that. He's awfully shy, you see. Next we have Deborah, a student studying in the Faculty of Medicine. I'm fairly sure she's carrying out research under the supervision of Professor Galvaroche. In any case, I hear she's after someone who knows a thing or two about medicine and nutrition. And here's Hinageshi of the Faculty of Anthropology. She told me she's searching for botanists and miners at present. By the sounds of it, she and Professor Tenkin are dealing with a formidable task. Last but not least, this is Professor Talaka Tia, an associate professor in the Faculty of Aetherology. I heard he's in need of a fisher to help him conduct research for his thesis. Unfortunately, things do not seem to be progressing well for him at the moment. I'd say those five are the ones most in need of supplementary aid. I'll leave it to your discretion as to who you choose to help, although be forewarned. Academics can be something of an odd bunch. Just be sure not to leave anyone in the lurch after you've agreed to help them. Fair. Is that a doge earring? <laughs> okay. 
Yeah, the only one that I could do is Sinegeshi. However, we're on the main story quest. We are not doing alternative quests, side quests, any of those other quests. Focus. tricked me the first time, so I don't know. I guess I am supposed to go to the main hall this time. Watching you. You'd better not let your guard down around Key. One small favor becomes another, then another, and before you know it, you'll be running to the other side of the world in search of a bottle of wine or some other rubbish. Then again, it might make for a welcome change of pace from your usual heroics, and as the Scarlark said, could also lead to interesting discoveries. It seems I've done an adequate job of relaying Scholar Montesheen's lecture to Raha. Given his experiences in the field of souls and memories, he had no trouble understanding it. That's true, he's basically enlightened. Like, he has essentially attained Nirvana. Having spent most of the time... Oh, <coughs> excuse me. Having spent most of the time in Thabnair... I've yet to fully grasp the lie of the land here in Charlotte. Even finding my way to the Annex proved a challenge. Estinian returned not long after we departed for the studio. A shame that he missed the chance to attend our lecture with the Scholar. Or perhaps not. Could you, could you have imagined... Uh, just imagine uh, Estinian in that room? He would have been like, well, what is this? <laughs> okay. Ah, welcome back. From what I hear, your trip to the studio proved most educational. While you were away, I received word from our fellow Scions. As expected, news of the warding scales was met with much joy. Preparations are now underway to bring the leadership of the Grand Company of Eorzea and the Eastern Alliance together to determine a way forward. Our friends have asked that we bring the scales in our possession to Limsa Lominsa. So the time has come for us to go on the offensive. It's too early to say for certain, but that does seem to be the way the winds are blowing. I, for one, can think of no reason to oppose such a plan, but let us see what awaits us in Vilbrand. Let's start by getting the scales out of storage. Give me a hand, would you, Astinian? That's interesting. We're kicking it up a notch really quickly. Um... I mean, in context, this is the very beginning of Endwalker. Phew, I didn't realize these crates were so heavy. I shouldn't complain, though. Berta, or Bertra, and the alchemists of the great work put their heart and soul into each and every one of these scales, so you must treat them with the utmost care. Are you not coming with us? As much as I would like to escape the forum's watchful gaze, I have little choice but to stay behind. We're already on thin ice, and if I, in my capacity as our official representative, were found to be consorting with foreign powers, well, you can imagine how that would go. I shall remain here and do my utmost to avoid ruffling any more feathers as I await word from Master Matoya and our other allies. With luck, we'll soon have good news of our own to share. The tide is about to turn. I can feel it. To Limsa Lominsa.
What? Hanging out in Orgamar is very different in Final Fantasy. <laughs> I was told to expect you. As you may or may not be aware, the Admiral is at present entertaining the Elder Seed Seer and the Sultana. Three of the most powerful women in the world in one room. Do you need a moment to prepare, or shall I show you to them? I am the fourth most powerful woman in the world, so... Really? No voice acting? My apologies for calling you away from Charlayan at such short notice. On the contrary, we are honored and grateful, and pleasantly surprised to be joined by such esteemed company. T'was only right that this discussion be conducted in person. We are locked in a war of attrition. Our forces struggle to contain the threat posed by the towers, and it is only a matter of time before we are overwhelmed. Victory will only be claimed through decisive action, and we have taken the initiative to set the wheels in motion. It is reassuring to learn we are all in accord. But might I ask what your plan entails? It hinges entirely on the warning scales and our ability to utilize their potential to the fullest. During your time in Charlayan, the Allied Nations have been engaged on separate fronts with no end in sight. To make matters worse, a surge in abductions of Kobold, Sahagin, Ixal, and Ananta have given rise to an increasing number of primals as well. But your triumph in Radzatan has given us cause to hope once more. The time has come to free ourselves of this menace, and it is you, the Scions of the Seventh Dawn, who have shown us the way. While the bulk of our forces will continue to hold the Telofaroi at bay, we will dispatch our finest to strike at the enemy's heart, Garlevo. These brave few will be the Ilsabard contingent. To think such progress has been made in so short a span. Its objectives are twofold. The first is to provide aid to the people of Garlemald. As previously reported, countless Imperial soldiers and civilians have been tempered. Robbed of their free will, they serve the Telophoroi's every whim without question. They too are victims. It is our duty to deliver them from their suffering, not for strategic or political gain, but because it is the right thing to do. I do not ask that we set aside the decades of conflict and conquest, that we simply choose to forgive and forget. I ask only that in choosing to remember we do not also forsake our compassion and morality, for without that there can be no reconciliation, only death without end. Aye, on that we can all agree. Our second objective is the colossal tower that Thancred and Uriandrin observed in the capital. Though its purpose remains unclear, there's reason to believe the smaller spires are merely a precursor of what's yet to come. Until the Tower of Zot was toppled, we'd failed to make any headway, though the same could be said of the Telophoroi. They're certainly in no rush to press further into our lands. I'd wager the spire's primary purpose is to divide and keep us occupied while they work towards our annihilation. Which is true. This would appear to be substantiated by Ishtola's analysis of the tower's influence on ethereal currents. Based on her observations inside the Tower of Zot, the spires siphon aether from the land, consuming it to maintain their form. However, they draw forth far more than is required for this task alone. The excess of aether remains unaccounted for, but we can be sure it is not being harnessed for our benefit. It wouldn't surprise me in the least if it was being redirected to the larger spire in the capital. There's a logic in that. Regardless, once we have uncovered the truth, we'll bring their schemes crashing down along with their infernal towers. That's all well and good, but what would you have us do? I assume it's more than handing over the scales and being on our way. We want you and your scales to join the Ilsabard contingent. Consider it an official request from both the Grand Company of Eorzea and the Eastern Alliance. Do you accept? Perhaps you should be the one to answer that. For honor and glory! 
for the people of Garlemald. For revenge against the Tolofaroi. Couldn't have put it better myself. Ishtola, Thancred, and Nurien Jay have already pledged their support and are on their way to meet the rest of the contingent. They were positive we would come to the same decision as they did. Luckily for all involved, their prediction was correct. Once we have delivered the warding scales to Alamigo, the contingent will embark on its journey to Ilsebar. Raoban and Lord Aymer, Aymeric <laughs> are overseering preparations, so I suggest you make yourselves known upon arrival. Back warm clothing, furs, and the like. Without it, the cold will do you in before the Tolofoi so much as draw steel. As for us, we'll keep the enemy busy while you're gone. They're not the only ones who can create a diversion. Now go, safe in the knowledge Eorzea will be as you left him, or better, upon your return. Is everything so expensive? Emmerich asks after me. Say I'm getting on fine and leave it at that. Don't you dare breathe a word about the poor. You're literally standing right in front of him. I must quiz Thancred and Nirianger on the conditions we expect in Garlemald. I know it's cold, but how cold? Well, I need to keep my ears covered. They can be a bit sensitive at times. I'll admit this is all rather daunting, though not quite in the way I was expecting. We'll be standing shoulder to shoulder with our alliance's finest. The best of the best. The warrior of light and, well, me. It's silly, I know. Perhaps this is my way of distracting myself from the part I should be worried about. Marching into Garlemald. You know, I'm quite looking forward to seeing who's been selected for the Ilsabar contingent. I have a few people in mind. Care to make a friendly wager? Ah, fancy meeting you here. I trust our mutual friend is settling into life as a scion. Collaboration never was his forte. The moment the fighting ended, off he'd go, like a Galakat swept up in a strong breeze. But rest assured, he will always be there when you need him. Probably. Robon! How you been? Ah, uh, the Wanderer's return. You've been busy bringing down a tower and producing the keys to destroy the rest of them. You should be proud. Those warding scales of yours are what's made this whole venture possible. Will you and Lord Amaric be leading the contingent? Regrettably, no. Our role is to organize the various delegations to peace of unit. Once we have seen you all off, it's back to our respective posts. We dare not neglect our duties for too long lest our defensive efforts fall into disarray. And just between us, there was a fair amount of opposition to the formation of the Ilsebar contingent. The very suggestion that we send out some of our finest troops behind enemy lines to render aid unto the Garleans has made rather unpopular in certain corridors. Ha! <laughs> Can't please them all. Sadly not, though I do my best. Truth be told, I'd much rather be at your side, charging into the fray. Alas, I've battles my own to fight where words may serve me better than any blade. 
I hate to say it, but Lord Amaric struggles a mirror my own. For the time being, the best we can offer you is the peace of mind from knowing Eorzea is in safe hands. As you fight the good fight in Ilsabard, I and the other commanders will do what we can to convince the naysayers that our cause is just. Thank you, both of you. We meet again. Gaius Tol Skeva. Word of your exploits travels quickly. From what I gather, the protective talismans you obtained led to the formation of this expeditionary force. My contribution on this occasion is but a minor one, that being the information I have shared with Maxima. For the sake of the people of Garlemald, may the fates be on your side. By the way, this is the same Gaius whose ass we beat repeatedly in Praetorium. So you're not coming with us. Strange, I thought you'd have a stake in this. I do. The Tolofu I have laid waste to my homeland and enslaved my people. But though every mode of my being cries for vengeance, I cannot be the one to deliver it. My presence alone would place the entire mission in jeopardy. I stand accused of murdering Emperor Varus and plunging Garlemald into chaos. Were I to travel with the Ilsabar contingent, I would give my countrymen ample cause to question our motives. Conversely, those who believe me innocent may instead celebrate the return of a former legatus and attempt to raise me to a position of leadership, further destabilizing the region and complicating the contingent's mission. Oh, woe is me. Whether I am branded a villain or hailed as a hero, I would only hinder your efforts. We will deliver your people from harm in your stead. I doubt they'll, believe they'll be pleased to see the champion of Eorzea set foot on Garlean soil. A fair point, but so long as you refrain from announcing your arrival to all and sundry, the average person should have no inkling as to your identity. Although your titles and deeds are common knowledge, only a select few would recognize you on sight alone. Perhaps one day they will learn that the Warrior of Light is not a demon to be feared, but a woman deserving of their trust. In light of Gaius's rather unique circumstances, I instead will assume the role of your guide. Though I may have defected for political reasons, my love for Gollumald and hers, I would stop at nothing to protect her and her people. Well said. Might I ask you to escort our friends inside? You might even bump into an old acquaintance or two, and if I don't see you again ere you depart, may the Fury guide and protect you, all of you. Ooh. 